Tell them, block long. And how long he stay on the boat, y'all? Boy, that programming is a, a bitch, ain't it? I'm sorry, excuse me. It's, it's, it's just a lot. I, I done gone back on the corner. Let me be cool. Yeah. Brother Quabin, that programming is something, man. It's, isn't it? Y'all got this, my Bible, my Bible, my Bible. Don't even read the damn thing. Read the story, and it says they were on the water 350 some days. Almost a year, as we know it today. And you on the water all that time with animals. You got to feed them. And anything that eats. There's only eight people on the boat. What's the first thing Noah do when he get off the boat? Found him some grape, man. Smashed him some wine. He could have grown anything. He could have grown some bananas. He could grow some apples. He could grow some greens. He could grow on some okra, which is, I mean, Africans really love some okra. So he could make him some gumbo, you know. He could have grown him some plant. No, he grew grapes. <laughs> and stood there and watched them. And as soon as they got tender, he stomped them and made him some wine. After you done shoveled shit for 350 days, you need to get you up. <laughs> That's the reality. You remember I'm a student of Dr. Ben, y'all. You know what I mean. That's the reality of this. I deal with all them stories in here like that and, and make us come to grips with it. Right? Oh, Lord, lightning going to strike him. You see, ain't no lightning struck me yet. Ain't no lightning struck me yet, and it's not going to strike me. Because I'm not offending the creator. The creator is an intelligent force. He would never come up with something as dumb as we believe in today. <laughs> it's just humans that do this. Right. African warriors in the Bible. This is one of my favorite tapes. It was delivered at UAM. One of the many times I had the honor of being at UAM. And one of the reasons why it's one of my favorite tapes, because I get tired of hearing this from black folks. You can't hate nobody. You tell them the reality about white folks and what they have done. Tell me just the historical reality. Just spell it out. You can't hate nobody. <laughs> you ain't read your Bible again. Because in Psalms it said, I hate them with a perfect hatred that hate thee, O Lord. Hatred. Almost a year, as we know, it's yeah, perfect. You haven't read Ecclesiastes. There's a time to love and a time to hate. There's a time to kill. There's a time for peace. I'll come to you to the preacher, the public shop, and he know all about it. Reverend Hula Howe, mm, preacher, get up, read it to you like a Bible story, and hoop and holler for two damn hours. And you don't know any more than you did when you first came in there, but you feel good. I'm going back to the ghetto, to the slums. I got to take this stuff off these white folks on this job, but I feel good. Look what Jesus has done for me. Why are you doing more for the white folks than he's doing for you? Why is that? If he loves you so much, why aren't they working for you instead of you working for them? These are some questions you need to ask. You need to ask that. Now, anyway, African warriors in the Bible deals with the fact that the Bible does not teach turn the other cheek. Those things were written several hundred years after the one they called Jesus was on this earth. He never said anything like that out of his mouth. And we have the historical data to back that up. He never did say that. This is what they put in there to control the masses of people and to pacify them. That's what the Roman Empire came up with. You look in that Old Testament and they blood is slinging every which way. The prophet Elijah, a man of God, Chopped up 450 prophets of Baal. Mm. Chopped them up. They didn't play. Jehu rode in, ordered Jezebel's behind her to be thrown out the window. <laughs> she dashed in the street, bust apart, and the dogs lapped up her entrails. These are people of the Lord. And you walk around talking about, I can't stand up and fight for my freedom because vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And he's telling people, get up, go wipe out the whole town. Mm. 
Every, the cattle, anything. And this is what it says in the Bible. It's written in the Bible. Everything that pisses against the wall, kill it. But I can't do that, you know. And then praying when you, they take your children and send them over to Iraq and everywhere. Oh, Lord. They're fighting for freedom, strength in the hand of the president and our nation's leaders. And they say, well, no, I'm going to become a new black panther. I'm going to fight for our freedom. Oh, you might get hurt. You're my baby. You're my child. Why do you want to do that? You can't get nothing by hating nobody. All kind of reason. When that white man drafted him, oh, he looked so nice in his uniform. <laughs> when they get to talking like that, take them to, see, I like to take these Negroes to the Bible and make them read the text. But you can't make them read them if you don't know them. See, I make them read the text. Read that. What does it say? Uh-huh, yeah, uh, well, mm, yeah, well, let's say that, but it don't mean it. What it mean? <laughs> I don't know, I'm going to have to ask my pastor. <laughs> You're doing good, brother. You're doing good. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Great black women in the Bible. Yes. You always hear about the men in the Bible. They, they, when, when King James and them got hold of it, they were such misogynists, such women haters. They didn't even get in homosexuals and they wanted to be women. That's their problem. Let's be honest like that. Psychosexual dimorphism. They didn't know whether they wanted to be male or female. So they left out the names of a lot of these women and they did great things here. And I used to use this one around Mother's Day. Great black women in the Bible. You go in the church and preach that, the women be howling and shouting and the preacher be saying, I can't wait to get this nigga out of the pulpit. <laughs> That's part one. <laughs> the story of Makeda is in there. You're going to be surprised at some of the people you're going to find in there. This is part two. And the great black women in the lineage of the one you call Jesus. And some of them had not too savory pasts either. They had some real skeletons in their closet. But they were great women. And they did great things. And they have that, that story in there, and it's the story of the Kandaki, uh, the Kandaki, the story of the Kandaki warrior queen is in there. And I think it's the story of Ya Asantua on this one to close it out. African origin of the Christian church. Dr. Feller just covered that, and, and uh, Anova covered that. There was no Christian church before there was one in Africa. And the principles they lived by were altogether different from the principles of the Roman Catholic Church, the European Catholic Church that took the church by military force. They took it with an army. They took it in the days of Constantine. I'll give you the history of how that transpired on this tape. Y'all all right? I got a little more time? Take your time, bro. Okay, it's not the lecture you expect to get from me, but you already got that, so I'm giving you another one, all right? You all right? Now, if you want me to stop, I'll, I'll go home. No, no, no. Keep it moving, bro. All right. Now, I'm, I'm finished with the Bible. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. <laughs> Somebody came up to me one day. Oh, you believe in Jesus? <laughs> I said, oh, Lord, I don't feel like messing with this. <laughs> I'm tired. Which one? Oh, mm. oh, each. Each. The one that died for you on the cross. Which one? Mm -hmm. What you mean, which one? The Jesus that died on Calvary. My Savior, y'all say Which one? And they looked at me, man, and all that Christian love started to turn into burning hate. The one in the Bible. Which one? And boy, when, uh, when they left me, they had consigned my soul to eternal damnation. Yeah. He said, there's over 16 people that you would call Jesus that uh, I didn't even tell them there was nobody named that. Over just, they they might have shot my ass. So, <laughs> I was in a no-win situation. <laughs> so some told me, don't tell them that. <laughs> the real Jesus was a black man. This was also delivered at the UAM. Ten points about this black man who may or may not have lived back then, but we know there was over 16 people with the name Yeshua who had been crucified by the Roman Empire. So we don't know which one they're really talking about here. 
that during different periods as the Hebrews, uh, Israelites were fighting for their liberation uh, against the Romans. They were fighting for their liberation. That's what the kingdom of heaven, and then I know in no heaven, kingdom of heaven. You don't even check the language out there that it says. But there's 10 and fur furthermore, there was nobody named Jesus. Mm. How do I know that? Because if you look in any, any dictionary, I'm going to be closing soon. I see y'all looking at your watches and everything. You know? I'm not in the motherland. See, in the motherland, they can sit all night long. Y'all can't do that in America. Uh, there is nobody named Jesus. There never was anybody named Jesus that lived in Palestine 2,000 years ago. Because 2,000 years ago, there was no J in any language. Look in any dictionary under the letter J, and it will show you somewhere between the mid-1600s. Yeah, mid-16th century, somewhere there. You get the letter J. There was none. So who the hell are you talking about? Who is this Jesus you keep hollering and screaming about? No wonder you ain't getting your prayers answered. Because you're calling on something that does not exist. All on your car tags, all on everything. Jesus, 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 Jesus. What are you talking? Don't get mad with me, y'all. We got to think. You got to, first of all, hold it. The Spirit is telling me to, to stop and, 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 and say this to you. You've got to think about this. When was this, these ideas presented to us? Where were we and what condition were we in? We were on the plantation. Who were giving us these ideas? Who was imposing these ideas on us? We already had our ideas about spirituality. We already had our ideas about the Creator. We already had our ideas about treating each other right. Do your unto others as you would have them do. We already had those ideas and we're living by those ideas. Who was it who gave us these ideas that we hold so dear now about this? Here's the second question. When does one who is holding another in bondage teach them anything that is good for them and that will make them a better person. Whatever they teach them will only make them a better servant and a, a slave of theirs. So now, everything white folks ever taught us, we have to dismiss. You have to do just like a junkie does. He has to first admit, I am a junkie. I'm a junkie. I'm a junkie. You a junkie. We all junkies. I confess I'm a junkie. Mm. I've been high off the white man's drugs for a large portion of my life. Yeah. Now, when I was a counselor to drug programs, one of the basic things that they taught that you had to do when you were counseling with somebody is not let them go into denial about the fact that they got a problem. They first, before any healing process can begin, must admit that they had a problem. An alcoholic has to stand up and say, I am an alcoholic. Got to do that. Because you got to keep that ever home in your mind. We are fools. We are all, have all been fools. And a lot of the reason why you don't like to let a lot of this stuff go. And let me, I'm not trying to take too long, but let me share this story with you. Let me share. I have to tell our driver to get some sleep, man. <laughs> but we got a lot of drivers in this car. Now, a lot of brothers came up with me. I'm going to introduce these brothers to you before I'm finished, too, because some of you sisters in here looking for some good, strong brothers. <laughs> Not that you don't have any here, but they might already be taken, so it's just okay. But look at here, man. I had a good friend named Cisco Oliveri's tall cat down in, in Atlanta. We used to soldier down there years ago, man. We did some wonderful things in the community for the people and everything. Some good business stuff, too, that brought some scratch into the community, you know. And he told me the story of his father, who was a big, tall man out of Texas. And he had this young girl, he was saying, you know. And his friend, thinking he was doing him a favor, came to him and said, you know, I saw that girl that you're messing with, and she was tipping off into the motel with another dude. And Cisco father didn't say thank you, man, for looking out, good looking out. He punched the cat in the face and knocked him down steps. Why? Because he went into denial. Why do people go in there? Why do people, when they catch somebody and they say, you, uh, uh, you betrayed me, they catch their lover or someone with someone by, somebody else, and I'm talking about male, female. Let me get that straight. 
but you, they, with somebody else, they kill them. Why? Because you made a fool out of me. No, they didn't. You made a fool out your damn self because you just kill, kill that person and them cops going to throw your ass in the dungeon. Now that's that. You know, so you made a fool out. They made their choice. Now you got to uh, hey, decide whether you live with it or not. It's that simple. You understand? Now, nobody belongs to you and you don't belong to nobody. That's the reality of it, if they're with you because they want to be there. But the thing is, nobody likes to think that they've been made a fool out of. That's the problem you have with black folks when you talk to them about this. They cannot believe, it's not so much that they believe in it, they cannot believe they've been a fool for so long. That's hard to come to grips with, to admit you have been a fool. Well, we have. We have. So now just admit it and get it over with. And if that's too hard for you, think about what the junkie got. You want the junkie to stand up. You want the junkie to say, go somewhere and get yourself some treatment. And before they can get any treatment, they got to admit, what, they're a junkie. Right. If they're alcoholic in your community, you need to go get some treatment. You need some help. Before they do that, they got to admit that they're other. You need some treatment. I need some treatment. Before we can get some treatment, we need to admit we are fools. Absolute fools. You believed in Santa Claus and taught your children about that. You was a damn fool. You worked all that hard and got all them things and gave a big, white, greasy, funky, blood butt white man the credit. You was a show enough fool. And we did it. So now, hey, can't nobody look at nobody and point the finger. Unless you were lucky to come up like Nova or some of these younger people here who wasn't exposed to that man. But we have to say, okay, I'm a fool, you're a fool. Now let's get about some healing for all of us. And so then the Spirit told me to get on, on with that because some people just don't like me hitting on their Jesus in the Bible like that there. Hit him, hit him. But I'm trying to give you your Jesus, the one the white man gave you, it's not yours. It's non-existent. I'm trying to give you the right man, which was Yeshua ben Yosef. I cover ten facts in here, and one of those facts that I cover in here is that the, what they say, the Jesus of history, quote unquote, was not God, considered to be God, not even in their terms. It took what? 400 years almost for them to come up and solidify that concept after spilling much blood over it. Right. He never even claimed that. Because they come to him one time and say, good master, say, ho, 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 who are you calling good? There's only one good and that's the father. They came to him and say, when is all this going to happen? He said, I don't know. Only the father knows. You understand? But the gospel of John say, the gospel of John is written when? There's no gospel that exists today from that period. There's nothing from that period that can go back further than 200 years after the fact. Absolutely nothing with the exception of maybe the gospel of Thomas, which may be between 140 and 150. And they don't say nothing about his life. The gospel of Thomas has a lot of sayings, which are wisdom sayings that came out of the ancient comedic text. All right, I'm trying to put it, put it back. We, have been re we are suffering from religious persecution. Mm -hmm. We were spiritual people, and people came and put these religions on us, and we just got crazy. We got separated from the Creator. Mm -hmm. That's what religion does for you, it just separates you from it. It's a, and see, if there's no organized religion, can't nobody make no money. <laughs> it's, a, it's a question of economics. You was in your mother's womb and you worshipped your creator each and every day mm. of those 40 weeks of gestation you were in there. You already knew the creator. Mm. The moment you were conceived in the womb, you knew your creator. The spark of life that met with the spermatozoa and the egg mm. that created this new car. Now, that created this thing came from the heart and center of the universe. And so you already knew the creator because... That spark you brought with you. And when you came in this world and you cried, you were given glory and honor to your creator. And they said, baby, sin the moment they cry in the world. Now you know. That don't make no sense. The marital life of Jesus and the son by marital life of Jesus. Marital life of Jesus. The man, when nobody had followed him, nowhere. In the Hebrew tradition of that day. How do I know that? Because I studied the Hebrew tradition of that day. And also, if you know how to read your Bible carefully, you will find out that he was married. Possibly he had two wives. Now, I know you sisters don't want to hear that. But the women invented that system, and I ain't going to say no more about that. 
his son Barabbas. Because the word Barabbas means son of the father. And when you read the New English translation of the book of Mark, they put in there the parts that the King James, the verses that the King James left out, and it doesn't just say Barabbas, it says Jesus Barabbas, or in other words, Jesus Jr. Mm. But there's a lot more in there to deal with. I quote from a book that's very hard to come by now, and that's uh, The Jesus Scrolls by Donovan Joyce, some very heavy stuff up in there. Mm. Black Historical Facts on the Life of Jesus, Volume 1, Volume 2. The historical reality of this person that they be talking about. But not only the person, I put the emphasis on what was happening in the world at that time. Didn't nobody give a damn about what was happening in, 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 in that part of Northeast Africa then. There was more going on in Kemet. There was more going on in Cush. A whole lot of stuff was going on. And when you say, and the stars shine and the three wise men came. Nobody, they been looking at that star every time it came out. They had been celebrating it. So, and they had named so many saviors after that star for so many years that nobody cared about some little cat born in a barn somewhere. <laughs> oh, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Oh. <laughs> it didn't even snow in Palestine, but twice in the whole history up in the Judean hills. It didn't even snow in Northeast Africa, y'all. And then shepherds left. There's not a school oh, in America a white left in that, Turner. Mm -hmm. I don't even know a liberation school named after Nat Turner. Nat Turner scared black folks. <laughs> he used to be a punk. Scared the hell out of y'all. He frightened you. Because I heard people say, maybe he's moving too fast. Maybe he's moving. <laughs> Nat had reached from the grave and put his hand on him. What else was he going to do? He had to do that. We were scared, y'all. We prayed, oh, Lord, send us a deliverer. Oh, Lord, get us out of this. And then we went to the babies, each new, first male child. It's you the one. Oh, Lord. And then up popped that. Oh, Lord, we didn't know it was going to be like this. You got to kill white folks? And then babies, too. While I raised that child, I nursed that child. We got to kill them. <laughs> teach, brother, Teach. <laughs> And that was too hard for black folks, man. Yeah, right. Right. And that's why even, and it's so hard, it's still in our psyche. We're so scared of him that we don't even have one school in any black community, not even a liberation school named after Nat Turner. Because mm -hmm. I'm not saying, you know, Garvey is worthy of all schools you name after him. Right. 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 And he wasn't no punk. None of them were. Malcolm wasn't any. But Nat was the one of all and his generation of black liberation preachers took it to them with the sword, with the machete, man. They took it to them with the cane chopping knife. They took it to them. They did, man. And that's frightening to most black people. Had Tubman didn't play. I'm dying. I'm going back. Dead men don't, dead men don't tell no tales. <laughs> The right Reverend Mother Harriet Tubman. She didn't play. She couldn't play. I'm scared. I can't go no further. You can't. You got up and ran. <laughs> That's how it was. Them was some bad folks from back in there. And the preachers that came out of that period were like that. They didn't play. My great, great, great granddaddy, John Campbell, which is the reason why I'm as crazy as I am, was a preacher who led a slave revolt in West Petersburg, Virginia. So, I mean, that, I, I love them preachers back then, man. Where they at now? It ain't but a few of them around. And, and don't, I don't know, I don't know, yeah, one or two I know who'll take it like that. Gangster preachers who'll take it to it. Take it to the height. And of course, and the word of the Lord came by Marcus Garvey. Before I delivered this lecture, I was at the UNIA building on Cecil B. Moore Avenue and 16th Street in Richard Allen City. White folks live in Philadelphia. We live in Richard Allen City. And they let me go in the office that the Honorable